Okay. All right, here we go, man. I've had the pleasure of uh, being able to interview Teray Gordon, one of the vets of this uh, comedy thing, man. You've been uh, kicking around this mic and, and, and uh, kicking up dust for a little while, man. Your name is ringing, obviously, internationally, but specifically nationally. Chicago loves you, bro. Uh, anybody that's into comedy uh, that, that is in the Chicago scene knows who you are, watching what you're doing, man. Uh, so thank you for taking this interview with me, bro. Hey, man, thank you. Thank you for having me. That's real cool, man. So from what I realized, man, you are from Philly, right? You're a Philly comic. You out of that nest or no? Born and raised. That's what I thought. Okay, so that's good, man. That's good stuff, man. And so... Um, the main things that I remember about you, man, is you were really a, one of the cats who was affiliated with getting uh, Kevin Hart uh, moved forward, even though your career was, you know, you was already bubbling when that dude had kind of, uh, was still, you know, getting his feet wet, if I remember right, if, uh, you know. So, you want to talk about that a little bit, or do you want to vary off into something about yourself more, or what you want to do? I mean, bro, it's your interview. Um, I look at it like, with Kevin was, it's, it's the, it's what was done for me. You know what I'm saying? Like when I came through early Philly, there were a lot of cats that people know, that would not know or never hear from, you know, that just did, gave a shit, you know, and they didn't have to, you right. know, as a, as a comedian, as any worker somewhere, you ain't got to give a fuck to the dude next to you don't know what he's doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. So when cats took a moment for me, it just, that was how I was built. So when Kev came around, he was able to specifically take advantage of what I had to offer. Right. On a, on a more personal and intense bait, like meaning he went where I went. Okay. I, I opened the doors that I was going into for him. You know what I'm saying? So he took advantage of that. You know, uh, there have been so many others that have done quite the same, but not to his uh, recognition level, you know, they're not stars, but a lot of comedians, I'm proud of all the comedians I've helped or, or, you know what, man, Cat really, Cat say to me, yo, too, thanks. I say thanks for listening. Like, <laughs> shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I, I'm sure everybody, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not the only person that has helped you out, gave you a, a tidbit of uh, advice. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for listening. Thanks for giving the shit that you thought that what I had to say would help. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. It's a lot of cats like that. Kevin, yeah, well, uh, feel free to drop us uh, to say some of them, man, because, you know, like, Philly is such an interesting little fishbowl, right? Um, like Chicago is. Y'all got right. a whole bunch of little scene uh, spots like Chicago. You could actually stay in Chicago, never try to really, really get out, and right. still, you know, have a, a career that you could be proud of. You know what I mean? Right. Philly is like that, too. I know the only person that I really remember was – um, uh, that girl, uh, her name was F um, just not just um, something B, I think it is. B flat, B flat, yeah, yeah, in Chicago, repping Philly and broke all the backs in the room. Yeah, I'm now to be, to, be fair, to be fair, I have a love affair with the Midwest. The Midwest is. Is good people, man. Like I've always gotten a lot of love and support from the Midwest, Chicago specifically. Yeah. Let me say two things. To be fair, B flat is from St. Louis, so okay. she has that edge. She's a Midwest woman. Okay, so but I thought edge, she said she was from Philly, though. She, she lived. In, she lived. She. I mean, we claim her. She born in born. In, she born in St. Louis, but okay. she started her comedy career in Philly. Okay. Secondly, I was it's just funny. We talking. You from Chicago? I told my lady the other day. I was watching. I was watching something about the Bulls. Yeah. And then something else I was watching. You know, I was watching uh, uh, The Last Dance. And I was watching something else. And it was Chicago. And I said to my lady, I said, who's, you know, we both from Philly. I said, babe, Chicago, the only city I'm jealous I'm not from. Uh -huh. And, yo, when I tell you my nigga, she ain't like that. She's like, what, what you mean? And I was like, you know, like, I, you know, I've been to Chicago so many times. I got so many friends in Chicago. Yeah. I got family in Chicago. So it's like. She was like, what you mean? I was like, it's like, you know, and I couldn't explain it to her because she hasn't spent as much time. I was like, babe, it's just different. Like, it's a lot of shit to do. It's, it's big city, small town type mentality. I was like, niggas is, you know, niggas is predominant there. Like, you know, you know, like, like a lot of times in Chicago, places like Chicago and Philly, 
we don't always go through the shit where white people be fucking with us too much. No. Because it's so many of us. Right. So almost in a naive way, we be like, fuck is you talking about? Like, how that? Yeah. And it's like that here. Okay. You know, it's just like, so when she was like, what you mean? It's just like, so I love Chicago, man. But yeah, B-flat, she from, um, like, she from uh, St. Louis, but she made her bones here in Philly. First time, first club I ever made bonus in was Jokes and Notes. Oh, first wow. club I okay. ever sold enough seats yeah. to make bonus was Jokes and Notes. <laughs> Well, hey, man, again, like I said, man, Chicago is a, is a fan of yours. I know for sure, um, you know, a few cats was like, okay, well, yeah, you should check, reach out to, you know, to Ray, man. And, yeah. and, uh, but, you know, we got mixed up a couple of days. I don't know why <laughs> motherfuckers thought you was a member of the nope. I never, and you know, it's funny, I'm not a joiner. I'm not, I, I said something, because, you know, I be putting up my little posts and post yeah. my little cooking videos. You know, everybody got doing something during the pandemic. Yeah, so that's I what I want to my do. little cooking videos. Yeah. And somebody's like, you should make platters. And I told him straight up, I said, I, you know, I don't like people that much. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> to be dealing with me. So I never was, I never joined any organization. The only thing I, I belong to SAG after. That's the only thing. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's what I said. <laughs> Some checks so, coming in. And not, and not as this. It's just, it's just not my thing. You know? Right, right, right. No, no yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that's one of the main things that I've been uh, talking to brothers about, man. So, Go, let me go back into my little interview mode because I'm really kicking it with you. I love it. Um, before COVID hit, March, you know, say that, were you working on any projects that, you know, that you felt, you know, got interrupted by this whole thing or, and or that you had to put on hold till we get off of? You know what? Two, 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 uh, answer two questions then because that's a two part. No projects, but my I have a weekly event called Soul Comedy, man. It's like one of the hottest nights in the, in the, in the country, honestly. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that from what comedians say and what the people say. I've right. been doing it for six years every Wednesday night at a uh, world-famous jazz club, Warm Daddy's here in Philly. Okay. And that got interrupted, you know what I'm saying, because okay. the club has moved. Um, but, I mean, so, yeah, that got interrupted. Now, projects, the funny thing is I have an album coming out. Okay. Uh, to, it's called To Ray, a comedy album. Uh, June fifteenth, which is my birthday, but I was able to finish that. Okay, because I'm sitting still. Yeah, so I yeah, just yeah. break out the laptop and cut it up and edit it and, and get it up on a CD baby and get it ready for distribution and all that. So I was able to do that. So two, you know, twofold. I'm not able to work as a stand up comic, right. but I'm still able to put out something as an artist. Yeah, everybody uh, that I, you know, that that's in the business, man, had to. Put they, uh, you know, their gigs got erased because of this, uh, this circumstance, man. And I'm happy to see that you really have stepped up and told me about some of the stuff that you were working on. Because a lot of dudes don't have a plan, man. I talked to some brothers and I'm like, well, do you have a plan that's off stage? Because even if we do get older, and sometimes you may or may not be able to get on stage. You you got to be able to earn some money. And I yeah. say, you know, I, so did you have anything besides your CD, CD slash DVD, which I'm looking, I'm excited about having, and we'll go into some other aspects of that. Um, do you have any other hustles that you do? Like, you know, I heard of brothers teaching classes, you know, online, Udeme, stuff like that, man, because why not? You know? Yeah, you know what I I can honestly say, I didn't have I, I I don't have a lot of things that I do that physically take place off stage, but previous to this, well, I guess I say in the last five six years of my career, I've really started paying attention to the business of comedy and okay. how much money you generate. Right. You know, like I don't give a fuck where it is, dude. Like I don't care if it's the little bars. Yeah. We generate a lot of money. Oh, them, we generate them, all the money. Yeah, them little three, four hundred out of lights, they add up, man. You know, we're yeah. not in there for no reason. Them people don't have us in their venues that they like. They right. love us. That love exactly. don't have nothing to do with a lot of the situations we're in as, as artists, as performers, especially when you're in a venue. The venue is making money. Right. So I, as you said, that offstage income, I've been in pursuit of that before COVID. So I'm I'm a big proponent of uh, Sound Exchange, which is the pub the publishing house that gathers your royalties for uh, your music or your jokes. In our case, being played yeah. on any platform, so you know that's what I was like. I get I I was getting Sound Exchange royalties, but in my head it was like, well, that's all for this amount of album. What happens if I put out three, four more albums? Right, right, right. So that's what I've been on. Like, let me get control of some content. 
Man, awesome. Because that's what's key right now. Absolutely. As you see, uh, Netflix that's why we own this company. right now. <laughs> right. Net Netflix, Zoom, ain't none of them niggas complain. Right. Yeah, Facebook, it's, ain't, no, ain't nobody complaining over there. Right. You know, the average mm -hmm. motherfuckers hurt. They can't get to work or they're home with their kids or these kids, you know, being home and not being schooled the right way. All of that's taking place, but these are ways to communicate and own, own what's going on over those communicate that's not being owned by the people that are doing all them damn TikTok videos and all that shit. That's free. <laughs> right. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, mm -hmm. I've been in pursuit of that. So, yeah, I've been concentrating on that. And like I said, but bless, the good thing is before this, I'm not just running around being, as you say, on stage, on stage. And it happens, man. I'm not, I'm not dissing nobody. I'm not taking no shot. I was there. I know how I feel to have every nickel and dime you make come off that stage and that be the way you live it, almost like a drug dealer off off the grid, ain't got no paperwork, ain't got shit in your name. I've been there. Right. Man, I turned that around. I'm a business. Yeah. I own a business. Yeah. So I applied and got, you know, funds for pandemic. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I got my paperwork. So yeah. financially, I'm fine. But again, the the quest and the, and the getting on stage, that's not just, that's just not being satisfied right now from sitting in the house. So, you know, that'll be back when it's back. But right now, oh yeah. yeah. It's about, oh, it's about sure. that off-stage income. For sure, for sure. And I, I look at um, mentioning your CD slash DVD. Um, mm. I look at Netflix, man, and I, I feel like there's a big hole in it with brothers like yourself, and there's quite a few other brothers that's been in it long enough to, to have gan garnered the respect of a platform like Netflix, but have yet to be explored correctly by Netflix, unless I'm wrong. If you got something that you plan with them and it's on its way, then maybe, you know, erase what I'm saying. But I look at 90% of the stuff on there and I see even the stuff that you would allow to get on uh, YouTube. And I say, man, these brothers are 50,000 times better than what's being sold out here. And it's, you know, and so what's your opinion on that? You know, how do you feel about that? I went to a Montreal Comedy Festival. I was, you know, maybe, oh, shit, what is this, 2020, maybe 2012. Yeah. And uh, the, the, every year Montreal does this, the biggest comedy festival in the industry. It's all industries. Yeah. Everything that has anything to do with all the agents, all the managers, all the producers, all the filmmakers, everybody at sure. Montreal Comedy Festival. For sure. Um, had us every year. So they, you're invited or you go as industry. You pay to go or, you, or, they, or they invite you. I was invited as new faces, and basically what you go into is a situation of a, you know, you go there to find representation, or, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a comedy festival. Yeah, for sure. Co comedy convention, everything comedy, right? So it's themes every year. So the year I go, the theme was the business of comedy. You know what I mean? I don't know shit, I'm just there, but I'm paying attention to, at one point I was sitting in one of the seminars, I probably wasn't even listening to what was going on in the seminar, because I hadn't performed yet. Have okay. to perform, so my mind is in that. But as I'm sitting there, I mean, everything, man, the swag I got, like they got free clothes for it. We got for them. They put up a nice hotel. I got car service, and I'm sitting there, and it just dawned on me, it's like, all of this is paid for in some way from comedy. Like all of the money that's here is from comedy. Right. Like even the sponsors that's putting their money up to do this, that, and others because they know they're gonna get it back on the dollar that's generated off of comedy. So when you ask me stuff like that, it's like, you know what the problem that the problem is for a guy like us is that Netflix is making money. They ain't looking. They're being pitched to. Right. So if they was making money, if they if they was a business that could they, they had to make money to survive, they would be out looking. Okay. That's a good angle. I haven't heard that. They're saying it's not it's coming yeah. to them from their agents or their representative. Yo, I got this, I got that. We just haven't made it in that funnel yet. Okay. But right now, that's exactly what it is. So much shit coming to them. Right. That they got a funnel because right. they making money. They're not broke. They're not looking for something, right? Especially right now. Right. <laughs> because it, right. Cause a couple years ago, what they did, they got smart. You know, everybody share, everybody, yo, you got my Netflix password. They, a couple years ago, they limited that shit to like five. Yeah. If you want more, you got to pay a little more. Well, that's thinking about back, you know, three months ago when everybody was just moving around how they want. Well, now everybody's in the house. You all sign on. Somebody's going to get kicked off. They got to buy that shit now. <laughs> now they got to get their own membership. Right. So they've been making money. So that's all I say. I'm not saying they write for it. 
I'm just saying art is not art is not brought to the forefront because it's art. It's because it's popular or because it'll make money. Okay. If okay. a picture look good, a picture look good. That's not a for debate. Everybody, if you got a picture in your house, it might never be like, man, that's a great picture you paid there. You're like, me? Damn, man. They probably say other motherfuckers need to see this, but up, other than that, they would know by looking at it. It's not till a whole bunch of other motherfuckers see it that they go, man, that picture worth something. Okay. Well, that's awesome, man. That's, that is an angle that I have yet to run into, man. And I appreciate you uh, blessing me with that, man. So, yeah, man. yeah. So in Philly, man, you were mentioning your Wednesday night. Do, do you think it's going to return? Yeah, that's funny because you, you, you mentioned that. The general manager just texted me today. We both know what it's going to be. Um, okay. It's not going to be, you know, when you first open it up, you got to let people come back to the world as they, go, as they want. You go open, you, I'm telling you, they can be like, yo, shit open tomorrow. Still ain't going, everybody ain't rushing out in the streets like that. Yes. There will be some, but there will be some that, nah, I'm good, and they'll wait. Sort of right. like when something come out, like I always say when some new technology come out, a new phone, a new edition, I wait for that first wave with all the bugs to get through. Right. Then when they send the reissues, I'm going to get that one. So it's the same one, same thing with this. Like people are going to wait for a moment. So you're going to be dealing with lower capacity. But what you can do and what you need to do with any production you may have your hands on is now you stream that shit. Now you start taping that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I always at my show, I always tell people you can take your pictures, take a little quick video, don't be recording all our set. That ain't what we come to perform for. Enjoy yourself while you're here. Right. Put your phone down, enjoy it. And please do not ever go live from my event. Like, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't like that shit. Okay. Now I can capitalize. I'ma still say that. But yeah. I can capitalize on that too. Like, yo, you ain't gotta go live. You can turn in and watch it on this. Yeah. For yeah. this amount. And right. I don't care if it's a little two, three dollars, but those people will pay for pay pay to view it and it will be produced in a quality way so they enjoy watching it. They're yeah. not watching somebody holding their phone watching the show. They're watching the show stream specifically for them to enjoy on their phone. It's right. a difference. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially when you ask for somebody money. Because I am gonna be asking for money. <laughs> I hear you. And it's a few of those. How do you feel about these people that's trying to do uh like uh, Facebook Live comedy in the corner of they room. It's a hustle. It's, yeah, it's I mean, working it's exactly, for some of us. It's exactly that. And it's a small hustle. But I mean, I don't, I don't like it. And yes. it probably, with the, from, if you, you know, follow me on social media or speak, you know, you may feel from my sentiment that I knock it. I don't knock it. I just don't like it. I mean, it's just not my thing. Yes. Um, and I think it cheapens the game because when you get back out of this and go, well, I need this amount of money, I'm like, you was just on here working for tips. <laughs> right. You know what I'm you're doing that same you did that same joke online I sent you two dollars on cash at. Right. So tonight you need five hundred. <laughs> and exactly. they don't see that part. You know what I'm saying? And you not make it like it, it to me it's like I don't understand why y'all see it. Like, okay, I don't give up. You got it. First of all, have you seen anybody on that level do anything but just go live? You ain't seen Mike Epps have a comedy show. He just go live, start talking, do his little videos, whatever, whatever. That's just him. Yeah. And people, but those are the people that have a built-in following that if they was to say, okay, give me two dollars and I'm gonna do something, they would make ten, three, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Yeah. You're not gonna make that. So per <laughs> show, you might be making man, four hundred on it. Like I told somebody, that's said the first time I went live, I made eight hundred dollars. Okay. Because people kept it, man. I wanna go, I just want to see you, nigga. Do you all right? I went live and did the same thing I'm doing right now. Talk to you. Right. Right. The second time I went live, $40. Okay. People feel like I've done, you know, I gave you something to get by because they don't look at it the same. They look at it like what you're doing instead of what you used to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, let me send you a couple of hours. But right. I'm not going to pay for that all the time, nigga. Right, 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 right. So you got you know. it. You got to have something that they will be willing to pay for. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the conversation um, off this subject, so to say, is that the world is changing, man, and brothers ain't going to be able too much to live off of what they used to be able to do. I was involved with a conversation that included uh, Bob Sumner and the only other, and a couple other brothers that were still doing this, but they were, the one person that kind of disturbed me a little bit 
is that it was a Zoom with about 20 people, 25 at the most, and people was really kind of jocking this dude who was on a different world. And I ain't got nothing against him, but I'm saying, man, we, as black folks, we out here struggling because we don't rarely ever own anything, but we spend more time praising dudes that did some a long time ago instead of developing and growing what we own, which is what we really truly own, which is the art. You, you understand me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> I had a good friend uh, that used to, used to uh, came from East St. Louis, but he came up in the Chicago scene, uh, Willie Lynch Jr. Yeah, I know Willie. Willie would, say, Willie would say, niggas been beat so long that they love to be patted on their head. You know what, man? That's so, a good way to think about it. And so that's how it be like with how we look at shine and, and, and fame. We love, like, we, that's why, like, that, that R. Kelly thing, man, and we totally disagree on R. Kelly and Bill Cosby, funny mention Willie. Like, we are totally into the opposite. I just don't like sexual predators. I don't look at it like that ain't, that ain't man game. You should be able to get out here and, and, and so enjoy your satisfactions uh, without all of that. You know, without okay. praying on women, but that's my opinion. I leave that for another time. What I'm saying is, with a guy like R. Kelly or with with these famous people, so much is ignored because they're famous, and it's like you don't see. Like I'm sorry, like I, I I'm like yo, Michael Jackson did that shit. Me, you know, and it's like yo, da, da. I was like, listen, listen. There's a buffet. It does not mean because you know you can blame the parents. I'm like, oh, look, listen. What I'm trying to say to you is everybody's wrong. Don't yeah. mean Mike not wrong. When, 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 okay, the parents is wrong too. But when you go to a buffet, you ain't got the, he 30 years the fuck, oh, he know it ain't right to be with a nine-year-old kid. Like that, that he knows, that he can control. The rest of this shit y'all talking about, I don't want to hear. So when you're dealing with those type situations and people ignore these things, imagine the lower level of it. Like you said, you got 25 people on the screen, they just enamored to see the nigga. They, they texted, yo, I'm on the joint with. They probably was, man. And I, really? yeah, and I, I was um trying to talk to Bob Sumner about business. Right. And they wanted to talk, they wanted to tell their jokes to each other and stuff. And I'm like, man, y'all got an opportunity to, to, that could lead to you making money or changing your life. And you want to talk about, you know, when Def Jam was out in 89 and you, you I, I watch it happen so often because I'm around a lot of comedians that are face recognized, famous. Yeah. I'm on the road with some more for the last 10 years. You know, I'll be around Kev. Yeah. Sometimes Kev, Kev level of fame fucks me up. Like, yeah. I don't really think about it. Cause I'm just, and he, and he doesn't, he's, he is, like, people can say what they want about Kevin Hart. I'll tell you this. I'm like, he is comfortable being a celebrity. He has okay. no issue. You're not going to see Kev look up 20 years from now and see Kev. Y'all don't understand the pressure. I'm, he, it's not him. Right. He, he understood what he signed up for. He wants everything that comes with that shit. So okay. I say this to say, one day, we was, he's in Montreal. This is not uh, 2008. This was before, a couple, <laughs> years later, a couple years later. A couple years ago, we went to Montreal again. And I'm up there with him, we go to lunch, and I'm sitting there, and we just talking, and some white lady walks up, again, you know, not to be racist, and I'm just, just, I'm just describing, just being descriptive. Yeah. White woman walks up with her child, with her son, and he's like seven, and they got the pen and the pad, or they got the camera, they, you know, put, pushing the camera to him, yeah. and they speak French, and they only speak English, and I'm like, <laughs> damn, like, damn, yeah. like, yeah. that's when I was like, like that's different level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm actually credited for giving Hannibal Burris his first road gig. And okay. He's been a friend of mine. So when he blew up, you know, I was like uh, sitting in a bar with him. And I noticed that these people was like standing at the window and there was people just tr waiting to watch him eat and shit. And I was, I was like, man, this shit ain't weird to you. He's like, man, you don't know how weird it is. It is weird. Right. You know what I mean? So I get it. And, yep. uh, you know, but. Come on, man. We talking about Ron from a different world, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's a long time ago. Y'all, y'all, I, I, I appreciate the brother. He right. I wouldn't know. I enjoyed a different world. It helped me know that I could go to college. 
Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I knew I knew I was going to college when I seen school days. I was like, I'm going. Exactly. That. That, and that the funny thing was, else. I didn't go to HBCU. I regret that looking back on it because looking at it as, and looking at then you know you just you just know better as you go older. But because of what college experience can be encapsulated, meaning I, I you don't think of college when you're going into it like it's just a moment in time. It's just a part yeah. of my life. You, you think, think it's so. such a big. I would have loved to have that part of my life been at HBCU, but I, yeah, I knew as soon as I seen school days, I'm like, because I, I guess in my head, I never visualized what you don't do when you ain't in class in college. <laughs> and so school days, I was like, oh, you go, oh shit, I'm going to college. Like, it was like, I, I knew right then, I'm going yes. to college. Well, I don't want to leave that comment hanging because I'm not hating on the dude. Yes. I'm just saying yes. they were wasting ample opportunities to talk to a, a dude who's basically a boss. You know what I'm saying? People, not there for the same thing, bro. Like, people don't be there for the people. Everybody's not, everybody's not here for the same shit. Yeah, that's true. But I just, I just hate that we as black folks don't uh, think business wise. Like, and I've seen that you do, man. I've seen that you actually have a couple angles on the business line of this that um, have even helped me, man. So I appreciate that. And I'm going to, um, you know, ask you one last question, man, and get you uh, get you on your day because I've I've scheduled a certain amount of time. I want to respect you, man. So, yes, <clears throat> are you writing anything like a movie? Are you writing anything like a play? Are you putting something together that's gonna feed the people, man? If you are, tell us about it and tell us where the people that watch my little podcast slash YouTube thing can go see you at. I started, man, uh, did just today, did my fourth and fifth episode of my podcast, The Life is Funny, Keep Laughing Podcast. Okay. Uh, as you see here on my shirt okay. and on my backdrop on my wall. Um, it, it just, man, uh, people have been telling me I, I need to do a podcast half my life, man. Like, <laughs> most of the time I should have been doing a podcast, but um, I haven't been doing one. Right. And just by this starting having the time again sitting still and, and exploring the options i started doing the podcast today's episode spoke directly to what's we what's going on so that's feeding you know most of it's for me most of it's just to get my own release and talk about but today was feeding today was necessary for us to talk about what's going on in our culture yeah um so that's i did that but yeah man that's that's the project that I'm I'm putting out like my album, the podcast, my album, the podcast. That's what I, sure. that's what I'm pushing. I try to be singular like that because other than that, I won't get nothing done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, if you take on too much, nothing gets done for me. I don't know how anybody else operates, but for me, if I take on too much, nothing gets done. So I like to try to get uh, two or one one or two things done and, and, and then move forward. And Man, since I got my album completed, I'm ready to do. Some of the other albums I got, I have a lot of material, a lot of shows recorded on my phone that I can cut up as yeah. albums and get the audio recorded and dropped and all of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that since I did the first one. You know, you know how to do it better from doing it. Right. So. Right. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for your time, brother. Um, I'm going to keep you, my bro. eyes on you and keep you in my prayers. And, uh, man, get with Damon Williams and get back out here. And when, when I ro roll with my stuff again, I'm going to try to give me a budget so I can get you out here, bro. <laughs> okay. Appreciate right, you, brother. Thanks I appreciate you, man. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. Yes, sir.